we going? We're going to Angola. Oh, Hi. are you Camry? Yeah. I think we're gonna think I'm bald. What are we doing? I don't know if I wanna say. I think I kinda just wanna keep it a secret and then boom, and there it is. Fair enough. But I guess I could say it and like cut it out. We are going to trade a 250 belt for a motor. And I'm gonna bleep every single word of that out. What is up, fools? I've got some exciting news. Well, exciting for me. The search is finally over. But let's start with what's going on in front of you right now. This engine I'm putting together, it was Orange Dillon's 19 CRF 250RX. Um, if you guys didn't know, he blew it up during a race this past June. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to get my greasy fingies on this bike. So I gave him a $2,500 offer I thought was fair. Um, but Orange Dylan being Orange Dylan, he's like, eh, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to fix it up and keep it as a backup. Going to get another Honda since I'm comfortable on it. I said, all right. Well, what do you know? That orange dude bought a KTM. So he's actually Orange Dylan again. And let me tell you, he's been killing it on that pumpkin. I'm freaking proud of you, homie. And I love you, dog. <laughs> anyway, since the Honda wouldn't be a good fit for a backup now that it's a completely different bike, I told him I'd still buy his 19. So here we are, $2,500 later, and $1,100 in parts. Throwing a new OEM crank, main bearings and seals, and a Pro X piston inside this rice burner. Now that you're all caught up there, let's flash back to a month ago, surfing around. On marketplace you guys know I've been searching for a newer 300 EX if you don't now you do and usually I see the older bubble style plastics or new ones that are way overpriced and completely stock well not today boys I found the perfect ingredient for my build and what do you know he's wanting to trade for a 250 F <laughs> I am super excited to have this thing. Um, I guess I'll just walk around and show you what this thing has got. Fox floats up front, Moto Waz, rear shock, Hauser A-arms. I'm not sure if these are plus ones or plus anything. I'm not sure the spec on them quite yet. JB Racing swing arm, Rath Nerf bars, JB Racing shock relocator bracket, Hyper bead locks with CST pulse tires. The frame has been gusseted. It's cracked in the one spot that I have found. Four work seat cover. PRM rear grab bar. Dominator two axle. Sparks exhaust. Flex bars. Hauser clamps and steering stem. Quad tech hood. Wrath front bumper. Clark oversized tank. And that's about all you need for an XC build. So this is pretty much perfect. Um, the only thing is maybe a skid plate and a rear rotor guard. I have a rear rotor guard on order. Hopefully it gets here before Ironman because I'm racing this thing at Ironman. Today is Monday. It is this weekend and I have got a lot to do. So this thing is an 07 Honda TRX 300EX. The guy I got it from, he kind of used it to play around MX for his son, I guess. He's getting out of dirt bikes, or no, he's getting out of quads into dirt bikes. So that's kind of why I traded. Let me know if you think that was a good or a bad deal. I'm not quite sure yet. I mean, to me, it was a good deal. I had 3,600 into Orange Dillon's 19. 
Um, I know that bike is worth a lot more, but the thing is you cannot build this quad for 3,600 bucks. You can't. Plus stock ones were going for that. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to justify that when you put all that work into building something. And I mean, it was a nice bike. I, I really didn't want to get rid of it, but I needed this quad. When I first saw this post, I actually offered him the 18 that I have. And he's like, yeah, I'd be interested in the 18. And he's like, uh, give me some info, how many hours are on it and stuff like that. And I was like, well, I don't really know how many hours are on it. There's no hour meter. That 18 was sitting for about a year before I got it covered in dirt. It was road and mud or something and put away. So it was dirt stained. And even after a good pressure washing, it was still pretty dirty looking. But I mean, it was, it was still a nice bike. So he told me he was interested and I was like, all right, when, I mean, can you meet me halfway? It was total, it was gonna be a four hour drive from, from here to meet him where he is. He's like, well, not today. I really think that I want a cleaner bike. I was like, ah, no, I need this quad. I need it, I need it, I need it. And at the time, Orange Dillon's 19 was not together. So I was like, tell you what, dude, I've got a 19 RX and it's gonna have a full rebuild. He's like, yeah, I'd probably be interested in that. So I sent him a couple pictures. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep me updated, let me know, let me know. So that night I ordered all the parts for it and I've been slacking just cause I'm trying to save money for other things, but I was like, I need this quad. So I went in and ordered that, threw it together, kept them updated. I was like, hey man, I got the parts, it's thrown together and um, it's all good to go now, when can we meet? So we met up that weekend, it was thrown together. We are going to trade Orange Dillon's 250 that I just rebuilt for a 300 EX for the 450R motor. I don't think I can get them. You're not running fast enough. <laughs> Your feet on the wet pavement sound like did you hear it? No. The trade went down and I can't say this enough. I'm so excited. So if any of you don't know what my plans are for this, I had a 15 450R dirt bike. I'm taking that motor and I'm putting it in this. Spicy meatball. So with that being said, eventually I will be selling the motor, the exhaust carburetor, all the wiring, all that good stuff. That has got to go. Um, I don't need any of that for what I'm going to do with it. As of right now, I'm going to play with it, um, going to Ironman this weekend and ride it and kind of dial it in. But first we have to address the issues it has. Now, if you have eyeballs, you can clearly see these tires are flat. Three out of four tires are flat. I know this one has a plug in it and it's right on the corner of the sidewall somewhere, which is unfortunate because that's like the worst place to have a plug. But this is the only one that holds air. So that is what I'm going to be addressing today. I know these hyper bead locks, they like to leak around the inside as well as the outside if they're not cleaned. So today we are going to take these apart, clean them real good, hopefully throw them together and they will hold air. But first, let's give Orange Dillon's 19 one last ride.
This is the hottest car I've ever had ever. When it's 90 degrees, man. Dude, you can feel it like <gasps> take away your soul when you open the door. <laughs> <laughs> I like Chase. <laughs> All right, I got a shout out, Billy. My boy's got a channel. Uh, what do you do on your channel? Nothing. Nothing. The Billy has spoken. Nothing. If you like to do nothing, go check out Billy's channel. But I really appreciate this guy. He's got to go. I got to wash the bike. Here's his channel link. Check it out. Thank you. Thanks again. So camera shot. Thanks again. <laughs> All right, see you later. Later, dude. <laughs> see you later. Man. Yeah, thanks. See you, dude. Yeah, you're welcome. I didn't mind filming. Hey, I'll see you later. Hey, follow Billy Wickham channel, you know. <laughs> if you like to do nothing. <laughs> if you like to do nothing. <laughs> Bye. Now, just to confirm my conclusions, I'm going to spray some soapy water all over the wheel and we'll see air bubbles unless I'm going crazy and it's actually the tire. That would be no good. But these tires are pretty new, so I'm really betting that it's, it is these wheels. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a leak. You see it right there? All sorts of bubbles right there. So what that is behind this carbon fiber piece and this metal piece right here there is an o-ring that goes around here and usually those break down and get all nasty or they just need a good clean and a good grease if you listen very closely you can hear the wild bubbles escaping from the hyper locks so majestic so peaceful oh look we've got another one over here wow how about that Okay, boys and girls, we have our wheels on the bench, and let's just get started. You are going to need a 12.38 socket to zip these off. Now these center ones on the back side, they're gonna have a nut, same size, 12.38 socket. Now once all the inside bolts are out, um, usually they like to stick on the aluminum piece here, so. There's nothing wrong with a little persuasion. Give it some taps. Give it the BFS. And there it goes. Somebody has put some kind of sealer on it. Didn't work too well, buddy. It's leaking. Now this centerpiece comes out as well, so we'll go ahead and flip that over. Pound that out with the hammer. Clean this side too. It seems as though some of these o rings have been pinched, and that could be a big reason why it was leaking. But I'm going to try to really lather it up with grease and give it a good seal. Hopefully, it sits in the groove where it's supposed to. I don't really have time to get new o rings. Cause I'm in a pinch. I need to get this thing ready for Iron Man. So let's start throwing this stuff together. We'll take our O-ring and we will grease it up. And it should stick into place where it, sh where it belongs. It actually looks like it's working pretty well. So before that pops out, let's go ahead and situate this where it needs to go, like that. We'll take another O-ring, do the same thing, grease it up. All right, we'll lay it in the groove. Then we're gonna take our outer piece here. We're gonna have to shove it in there somehow without messing up the O-ring. Time for the bolts. Just like on the inside, I like to grease the outside as well, just so it kind of finds its place easier when you crank down the bolts. We'll take our ring and we'll just set it on there, line up one of the bolts, 
screw it in with your hand and another one just kind of do a square i suppose to get everything lined up and then sink them all in so the torque specs on these bolts they are 8 to 11 foot pounds and it specifically says do not exceed the torque spec limit so 10 foot pounds is a safe bet what I like to do is I like to snug them up till the ring sits all the way down into the inner piece. And then I break out the torque wrench. And there you have it. That's how you reseal your hyper bead locks. So, what's next? Um, 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 nah.